have a good time. Put a smile on your face, yeah. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. Mm-hmm. Even brighten your day and help you through the night. Bring you good music. Can't be caring. Elation Radio. And here's your host.
Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Good evening. Once more and again, we say good evening from For His Glory Radio. I'm your host, Apostle Brian Blackman. I'm your host, Apostle Brian Blassingame. I'm here along with my fabulous producer, Kimmy Kim. And we are right now excited. We're glad to be uh, once more and again before you. Um, there's been a few other services that I had to attend or minister at, and um, we hadn't been with you for a couple of weeks now, but we're glad to be back. We're glad to be back. Um, and... Um, Coming back, um, I, I faced a few other things and saw a few other things, experienced some more things uh, through the things of God, through the ministry, in ministry. And, um, again, I'm still at all, somewhat at all. I don't know why I would be at all, but I'm somewhat at all because <clears throat> it seems to me that um, – Again, the body of believers who say they're believers really seems to be in a place right now to where we don't know what we believe. Or, shall I say, some of us don't want to take or we don't want to believe the word at face value. Um, The Lord has placed them on my heart. Uh, to bring forth some scriptures, bring forth the word, um, and we're going to expound on it. I'm finding out more and more that uh, I can be maybe labeled uh, controversial, and that's okay because I realize that that's the God that I serve that's in me. Um, If I mean, when we look at the Word of God and we look at the life of Jesus, um, we see that um, everything wasn't always hunky-dory around him. He brought forth truth. And because some people don't want to deal with truth but don't want to handle truth, truth can be somewhat uh, controversial. Um, I'm just looking at um, the things that's going on and seeing the things that's going on around us, and I'm looking at the word and I'm seeing what the word says, but I'm I'm seeing sometimes that when um, there are certain things that I say pertur- pertaining to the word, I get a look that, that comes at me that's somewhat sh- strange. And so therefore, because of the strange look that I've been taking or been giving, um, I can say that, yeah, maybe I consider it to be somewhat fanatic too, but it's, it's a Jesus fanatic thing, so I'm I'm not that. It, it didn't hurt my feelings, um, so um, this, this is just a few things that um, that I'm looking at um, that I'm seeing. So um, before we get started, let me have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful, glorious opportunity to have such a wonderful producer, such as Kimmy Kim, to be with me that we can bring forth your word, share your word, that others may find hope in a dreary and somewhat dark time uh, throughout our nation, throughout our country, throughout our state, city, and even the world um, as we face different obstacles. Um, So we thank you that you are the way, you are the truth, you are the light, and besides you, there is no other. We give you praise, we give you honor for being the keeper and the deliverer and the healer that you are. In Yeshua, Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen, 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 and amen. I'm finding out more and more that <clears throat> there are certain situations and certain topics and certain things that don't don't want to address or they don't want to talk about certain different things. And it's mainly because uh, I think uh, they realize that certain things are very controversial, even when it comes to the Word of God. 
The thing that I see about Jesus Christ is that he didn't worry about controversy. He just spoke truth. You took it, you leave it, you take it, you didn't leave it. He just spoke truth. But um, what I'm what I'm what I'm going to point out is some is some things that, which are powerful scriptures. But the thing about it is, is that I'm seeing sometimes people see these scriptures, they read these scriptures, they quote these quote scriptures, and then they really don't believe these scriptures. Um, one of the things that stood out to me when I was looking at something in Jeremiah uh, 3, I was preaching last Sunday. Uh, and one thing, one thing that stuck out to me in Jeremiah 3, 14, and it was talking about um, uh, – here it was it's it was talking about how the children of God had backslid away from the Lord. And when I read it, it says in Jeremiah three, the fourteenth chapter, it says, Turn O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one over city and two over family, and I will bring you to Zion. Now, when I read this I read it coming out of the NIV version, where the NIV version called them, where the NET calls them, come back to me, my wayward sons. In the NIV, he called them faithless. Now, he didn't disown them. He didn't dis, He did not disown them and say that they weren't his. He just said that they were faithless, faithless. And it reminded me of so many different times that when Jesus was with the disciples. He said so many times, "O oh, ye of little faith," he would say that. Uh, calamity would come, storms would come. They would seem like they were at the end of their rope, or they felt like they was about to perish or die. And Jesus would say, "O oh, ye of little faith," and. Um, I, what I'm seeing in, throughout the body of Christ is, is we're, we're speaking words, we're, we're quoting scriptures, we're saying amen, but when certain things look like they're bigger than what we can handle, we look at the word and, and, and we wonder if the word is, is true, or we don't even we don't even want to try to exercise. That's it right there. We don't even want to try to exercise our faith, particularly and in a situation when we look at life challenges to where I believe that God is now beginning to cause us to operate in this thing called faith. We're in a place to where are we going to believe God, God's word, or are we gonna believe man? I'm gonna I'm gonna come on I'm gonna come on down and bring it on down the down the pipe. Are we gonna believe God and are we gonna believe God's word or are we gonna believe science? See now that's what a lot of people right there is, is beginning to that the I already know that some some right now probably looking at me kinda strange, kinda weird right now. But I'm I'm here to present to you and remind you that the church is still here. It's not gone. It hadn't gone anywhere. I'm here to present to you that the power of the blood of the Lamb is still here. It's not powerless. I'm here to tell you that righteousness and holiness hasn't gone anywhere. It's still here. It hasn't gone anywhere. The church is not powerless. The blood is not powerless. It's the, the the problem is is that the people are not trying to take or grab or hold fast to the word of the Lord value. Now, what I mean by that? Simple. Okay. My first scripture says this, and I've said this several different times on several different <clears throat> podcasts. That I've, that I've been out there because I've seen this work. I know it works. 
Proverbs 18.21 says, power of life and death. The power of life and death. Let me go down. I don't want to misquote anything. Proverbs 18 and 21. And life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Think about it. Nine times out of ten, before we do a thing, we always talk about what it is we said we're going to do. Or we always talk about what it is we're going to do. Nine times out of ten, we talk about or we say what it is we're going to do before we actually do it. It just it just normally it's just a normal change, it's just a normal reaction. But it is true. The power of life and death or in did not jot it down, but it came to my mind. So as a man thinketh, so is he. So we're talking about the power of life and death being held in our tongue. Now it's it's already given to us, it's already here. Jesus, once, especially once we are converted, once we become a born-again Christian, once we become a believer, Jesus taught his disciples simply this, Matthew 17. Matthew 17 and 20. Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, I ver- for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you should say unto this mountain, remove, hence go yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible to you. This is Jesus talking. Notice he said, un- Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Now, this was done during the case that a child was possessed by the devil. The disciples had been speaking. They had been proclaiming. They had been decreeing. They had been trying to cast this devil out, and this boy or this demon wouldn't come out. And they was asking Jesus, why could we not cast him out? Key, Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Now, it's not necessarily that they wasn't saying the right words. It wasn't necessarily that they wasn't using the right words in the right way. It was because evidently whatever they were saying, they wasn't believing it when they spoke what they spoke. They wasn't believing whatever it was when they spoke what they spoke. Faith, it works hand in hand with what it is you're speaking. If you're not speak, if you're speaking it, and you're speaking scripture, and you're not mixing it with the faith, it's not gonna work. Remember the seven sons of Skeva. They had people who had seen Paul in action. They had seen Paul deliver other people, cast demons out. So they figured they could say what Paul said and get the same results. And the demon in the in the man looked at him and asked him, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Again, they may have been saying the same exact words, may have been mimicking the tongue, may have been doing the whole nine yards, but because they did not believe what it was they were speaking, they got quipped beat up and dragged and 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 the Bible said they, they he left them naked because they wasn't believing the things God I'm gonna get to where I'm going that they were speaking what they were saying they had no faith now this is a this is a this is a thing because 
when we look at Romans, let me back up. I want to stay here for a minute. Jesus said unto them, he said to them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. I don't know how many of you have ever seen a mustard seed, but a mustard seed is very, 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 very small. (laughs) The thing about your faith, though, is that you have to cultivate your faith. You have to speak those things which are not as though they were. And a lot of times, it's not going to happen just because you said it the first time. Okay? It works just like you going to the gym and you decide you're going to lift 250 pounds. You try to snatch 250 pounds the first time, it may not work. So you drop it to 225 or 200, and you can snatch it at 200. So you keep lifting that 200 pounds for a few weeks, and then you say, well, you know what? This is getting kind of comfortable now. Let me me have 220 now. And then you say, well, let me have it 225 now, and you work that a little bit. And then you say, well, let me have it, let me have it 230 now, and you work your way up. to 250. So now you can handle 250 pounds. And your faith works the same exact way. The thing about it is that I'm sitting around a, a, a lot of believers is that we hear the word again. We We hear the word. We might even believe the word. But when it comes to the time for us to Exercise at work because we're in a strange place, a new territory. A lot of times we feel like, what's the use in even speaking the word? This thing is bigger than the word. No, and God's saying, no, this this thing is not bigger. This thing is not bigger than the word. It is not bigger than God. Listen. Let's go ahead and go to Romans now. Romans, Romans 12. Romans 12 and 3. When we go to Romans 12 and 3, he says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, Think soberly, according as God have dealt to every man a measure of faith. Now, I'm not trying to be high-minded. I'm not trying to be super-duper spiritual. But I'm also, at the same time, realizing that God has gave us a measure of faith. Now, when we look back to the scripture that we just left from, Jesus spoke of a mustard seed size of faith. When I look at this word that he gave us a measure of faith, that's more than mustard seed type of faith, which lets me know that we possess something that's greater than what we realize that lies within us. The thing is, is that a lot of times it's because we don't exercise that faith, the faith that's within us remains dormant. I keep hearing different people from time to time saying, well, you realize that uh, we, 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 we have a brain, but we only use probably, what, 20% of the brain or something like that, or 30% of the brain. What would happen if we were actually using the whole brain as we would be able to assure. Or be, I, I'm just saying that's the same thing with the faith that we have. It's 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 baffling me because some people are not. Um, I don't think they're even really wanting or desiring to even try to 
stand on God's word when I realize and I know that that is what God is bringing the body of Christ to. We're, we're, we're actually being trained. We're actually being equipped. We're actually being um, shaped and molded more and more into his image because that's what Jesus did. Jesus spoke a thing and it happened. And we said we're Christ-like, but we don't want to go through, we don't want to go through the suffering. We don't want to go through the ridicule. We don't want to go to the country. We don't want to go through controversy. We'll we'll take so many miracles and we'll take so many prophetic words to a certain degree. But if we think or feel like there's going to be a certain amount of backlash, then we're ready to we're ready to pump the brakes there. We're ready to stop right there because we don't want to take any more controversy. And I'm just one of those who who believes and and, and knows what I shall have a doubt that as long as you're in this gospel, as long as you're a messenger, as long as you are going to be speaking what does say of the world, the Lord there's going to be controversy. It was controversy when I first got into it. And I'm quite sure there'll be some controversy even after I'm on the other side to be with the Lord. I mean, I mean well, I don't know. I, I mean, maybe maybe somebody's still left behind me. They may have something to say. But I'm just saying, there's, there's going to be controversy. So, you might as well be obedient and just say and do what it is God is calling you to do. He has dealt unto us a measure of faith. Every one of us. A measure of faith. Man, because God, he, he He dropped this on me too. Because Matthew 18 and 18, he said, this is a barely, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This blows me away that so many people don't think that certain things can be bound in heaven or can be bound on earth as they is in heaven. When the word says clearly, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Listen, there is no exception to that rule. I'm not, I just read it. I hope somebody else is reading along with me. It doesn't say, I'm going to make it plain now. It says, very, very, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you bind on earth. It did not say whatsoever you bind on earth except COVID. It said whatsoever you bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. There is no exclusions. I'm going to go a little bit farther. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, my mind just went right back to Jeremiah 3 because God said to them, you faithless children. God, I wish somebody could catch on. So when God in the word, when he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, because that's what had happened in Jeremiah 33. They had turned from the Lord, and they had their own wicked ways. The Bible said that they were whoredoms and whores. They were into idolatry. God said, when If my people would turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven, and then will I heal their land. So could it be, hallelujah, could it be that the healing that God is talking about doing to the land through his people is because we have turned from God and we're looking for answers in other things other than God? God. So by us turning and looking to other things to be the answer, could that be what God is saying? Turn from your wicked ways. Turn from me. 
when you I mean turn from your wicked ways and seek my face. When you seek your faith, when we seek his face, that's gonna require faith. What's broken and what we're dealing with is not so much anything else except the fact that we've turned away from God and our faith needs to be healed. If our faith was was healed and we renew that relationship with God as a whole, then we will be able, then he will heal from heaven, then he will heal our land because we will be, again, reconnected, reunited as a whole, and we will be speaking as God speaks. We will see as God speaks. We will speak as God speaks and not the thing like this. Okay. Barely, barely, I say unto you, hallelujah. That was some money that dropped on the well, hallelujah, maybe it's raining money. I take it. Anyway, very, very, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And listen, sometimes when I say that to certain people and you say that concerning certain things, you will get this. Very, very, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And their response will be, but. And you can do it again. You say, very bad, I say unto you, whatsoever you should bind on earth should be bound in heaven. Then it'll come back with, but. But my word don't say but. My word says, and whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And what I'm saying is, they will say, on farther than that, I'll say, very bad, I say unto you, that whosoever shall bind on earth, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And they'll say, but. You know, you have to have common sense. Can I tell y'all, common sense and faith don't mix. It won't mix. It won't work. Oh, my God. It won't work. Can you imagine Peter being on the boat? He looks at Jesus. He sees Jesus coming, and he speaks and says to Jesus, if that is you, bid me to come. And Jesus says, yes, it is I. Come. And the first thing that's going to happen to somebody else in that boat or some first thing going to come out of somebody's house, out of somebody else's mouth to Peter is, Peter, I know you, 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 you checked. Peter, I know you talked to Jesus, and I know, and I heard the same thing you heard. I heard that Jesus said, it is I, and, and, and Jesus did say, uh, uh, go on out there and meet him, but you're not Jesus. But you, who you think you are, but you, you. You just been in this boat with us. I mean, you you haven't been in the ministry as long as I, as we have. But 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 no. It, when it comes to the word of God, we're gonna have to stand on the word. It's not a thing about but. It's not a thing about but. It is what it is. He's saying it high and dry. Whatsoever you bind on earth, he'll bind in heaven. Dig this. Oh, that was that. Man, that came from way back right there. Dig this. Mark 11. And and God ministered to me um, this point uh, about a week ago, pertaining to this particular scripture here. Mark eleven twenty two. And Jesus said, or Jesus answered, saying unto them, have faith in God. Listen. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever Sale. I'm going to read that one again Because this one Connects everything else That I had just said before Remember I said There was guys who saw The seven sons of Sceva They spoke what Paul spoke Probably they tried to lay hands The way Paul tried to lay hands But they didn't have the faith 
back in the words that they were speaking. This scripture right here is telling us the same thing. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, what is your mountain? It don't matter what your mountain is. Mountain is something big. Mountains are something which we call circumstances, which are very real. They're bigger than you. They're bigger than me. They're big. They're big. They're so big. We have to have God. But God is saying to us, you have me. You have me on the inside. You have faith. Whosoever should say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Okay. Make it to you make it make it even simpler for him. Simpler for him. Have you ever been going around and next thing you know you feel a scratchy throat. Next thing you know you feel drip drip from your nose. Next thing you know you feel something uh a little water, a little mucus or something like that coming from your nose, coming from your eyes and the first thing you say coming down with a cold. Huh. Feel like you coming down with a cold. Notice how I arranged those words. I didn't say feel like me. I said feel like you. And because we speak those things, those things happen because we, they manifest off of what you speak. Uh, now, see, that right there, see, 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 see. That right there, they say, well, Brian, you just reaching, you just being far-fetched. Okay. All right. See, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, like I said, I believe what the word is, is is saying. The word is saying that whatsoever I bind on earth, it can be bound or it will be bound in heaven. So you, you may see me somewhere at a service or you may see me at church and I may say out of my very own mouth, we bind COVID in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua. I bind that in the name of Jesus. But now, the moment I say that, the moment that come out my mouth, I might lose over half the people because everybody don't believe what I just bound. <laughs> okay. And yet we say we believers. Why is it that we can't believe that part? But yet, when it comes to your soul salvation, you can believe the word of God when it comes to your soul salvation. Brian, what are you talking about? When you first received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you got saved, if you did believe or you did receive him as your Lord and Savior, you did this. Or somebody led you with what we call the Lord's Prayer, which simply says that do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? And you open your mouth and you say it, yes. And they said, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and your iniquities? And you opened your mouth and you said, yes. And then they said, do you believe that God raised him from the dead with all power in his hand? And again, you opened your mouth and you confessed and said, yes. So then the rest came like this. Because you believe and you and you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. And then they led you through the prayer. And you believed and you confessed and you said, God, you said, if I believe this with my heart and I confess this with my mouth, I am saved. And you confessed it, you got saved, you got you got saved, you got delivered from a world free of sin, you no longer bound going to hell, the whole nine yards. So if my thing is this, so if you had that much Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. If you had that much faith to confess that with your heart and believe it with, um, yeah, confess that with your mouth and believe it with your heart, and that was so powerful to snatch you from a devil's hell, how come you can't believe in your heart and confess that even COVID can be bound. 
somebody got to catch that. God dropped that in on me two weeks ago. If you can believe that with the confession of your mouth and what you believe in your heart, that thou art saved, you should be able to speak a thing, believe a thing, and it shall happen according to your faith. So my bottom line again, we as saints, we as believers, please, let's get away of this spirit of fear because God did not give us this spirit of fear, but a power, love, and that of a sound mind. Wow. Here, let's go here. So I'm, I'm getting ready to wrap it up. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians. I don't know how good this is, but it's good to me. I, I hope somebody else is listening. I hope somebody else is 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 getting what uh, what was was going on here. Second Corinthians ten four. It says, "For the weapons of our of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, not through me, through man." But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What are strongholds? Strongholds are, are, are imaginations, which, well, we're getting into that in the fifth verse. Casting down imaginations and everything or every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought that every thought to the obedience of Christ. So, what is it that's in your mind? What is it that's in your imagination? that is exalting itself, that's making itself to be bigger to you than God, whatever it is. We have to realize that it's not bigger than God. We have to realize that the, that the, that the weapons that we have, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God in pulling down strongholds. What is your weapon? Your weapon is your faith. What is your other weapon? The power that you have within your tongue to speak those things. What is the other weapon? The other weapon is your is the word of God itself. God watches over his word to perform it. The word will not come back to him void, but it will accomplish the purpose in which it was sent. So we bring those things and we realize that every principality, every dominion, whether it's in the heavens, whether it's in the earth or underneath the earth, all these things have to bow in the name of Jesus. So we bring these things under captivity. We place them in their rightful place under. I was going to submit under God and realize that these things are not bigger. They're not bigger than God. Listen. Job, let me get out of here. Job 22, 22. Job says this, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. People don't know, a lot of people don't know, you can decree a thing and God will establish it. If you're in right standing with God, you can decree a thing. If you know, Once you know the will of the Father, that's why we have to have that relationship. That's why we have to stand with That's why we have to have that one-on-one relationship with God so that we can know his ways. You know his ways. You know that you have his relationship. You can decree a thing. He'll bring you to a place where you can decree a thing and God will establish it. You can decree a thing. That's the word. And it shall be established unto thee. Like I said, it might not happen right then when you let me let me let me let me let me erase that. Let me erase that. Because see, I see that's just I'm just pointing out the human 
thoughts, the human errors. Now, see, that's the way I just, that's the way I just messed up. I, and I could have been messing up somebody's faith right there because it doesn't say it may not happen the first time. That's not what it said. I added that. See, I'm understanding more and more now the word says stuff like a childlike faith. Because a childlike faith, they look at that, they're taught that, they don't believe like we believe. They believe it at full value. Well, it said, thou shalt the crib thing, and it shall be established unto me. So the word says, thou shalt the crib thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine. Upon thy ways, no ands, no ifs, no buts about it. So, if we don't want certain things in our atmosphere, and it shall be established, knowing the will of God, you can decree a thing, and it can be, or it will be, established. So let me share with you, I'll just share with you a couple of things that I decree over my life. Very first thing in the morning, Isaiah 54, 17, simple. Um, I said Isaiah 54 is not, Isaiah 54, uh, maybe I said the wrong one. It, anyway, it is the one that says 54, Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. It's Isaiah 54. I was looking at 57. And I do believe it's 17. That's it. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every time that rises up against me in judgment, in judgment I shall condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and my righteousness is of God, saith the Lord. So, there is no weapon that's formed against me. It shall prosper. doesn't say that it won't be formed, but whatever it is formed, it won't prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me, there's judgments, false judgments, you got witches, you got warlocks, they out there chanting different things, they're sending different things. See, they understand how this stuff works too. They they yeah, they speak stuff, they chant stuff. So you cover yourself by saying, Every tongue that shall rise up against me in judgment, I condemn it. It has no effect on me. This is the heritage of the Lord. This I'm a part of the heritage of the Lord. My righteousness is not of myself, but it is of God because my righteousness is of dirty, filthy rags. But my righteousness is not of, me, of the Lord. So I'm in right standing with God. That's like I said, that's just one of one of the decrees that you can make. Psalms ninety one. Psalms ninety one. Um uh, I think I'm starting at the 10th verse. It says, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come now thy dwelling place. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. There's angels that are assigned to you. You can dispatch angels. You can have angels to do warfare on your behalf. And then in the 12 verses, that they shall bear thee up in their hands, least thou shalt dash thy foot against the stone. Protection. Protection. I release angels to go before me, go with me. We bind any human, uh, 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 human failure. We bind in the name of Yeshua, Jesus. We bind uh, human error. We buy, buy mechanical failure. You you can put these things in the action, and because your faith is being activated, it will work. I'm just trying to help somebody because I've been through a lot. 
God has God has allowed me to be in certain things and to to be able to um, come out of them simply by His Word, through His Word, by His Word. Um, I'm not going to drag this thing out and prolong it much longer, but um, when I first gave my heart to the Lord, and many people have heard this before, I had depression, chronic depression. I had anxiety, panic attacks. But every morning, even though I knew things wasn't working right in my mind the way they should, I would always wake up and I would always tell God, thank you for allowing me to see another day. And even though my mind at that time was not sound, I would always tell God, thank you for giving me a sound mind. And because I exercised that and because I kept speaking that, God saved me, God healed me, he turned me, turned that whole thing around. That was before I even really knew the word. And then when I found the word that God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and that of a sound mind, I took that word and I hid it within my heart. And even when some panic attacks would try to come, I would speak that word and peace would come automatically. I can't apologize. I don't want to apologize for the word that I'm sending out tonight because I know somebody can hear it, can grab hold of it, and I know it will be fruitful in somebody or a lot of people's lives that right now may be being tossed to and from. The word works. When all else fails, the word will work. Because Jesus himself proclaimed, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, his word will never pass away. And I have no problem with anybody spreading the word. I might have a little issue with someone who don't want the word to be spread, but if you speak Speaking what God says, speak. And you standing on God's word. I have no issue with you. Man, woman, boy, child, Greek, Gentile, Jew, stand on the word. Listen, if you are here under the sound of my voice, you have not met Yeshua. You have not met Jesus and made him the, the Lord of your life but you would like to. You could just simply say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is your only begotten son. I believe that he died on the the cross for all my sins and all my iniquities. I believe that on the third day you raised him from the dead with all power in his hand. I believe this with my heart. I confess this with my mouth. And you said in your word that if I did so, I shall be saved. So I'm asking you, Lord, to come into my life. Be my shepherd. Be my father. Lead me, guide me, protect me. I denounce Satan, and I ask that you make me a new creature in Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And, Father, we thank you for saving me. If you said that prayer, you would like to get in touch with me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I think I have opened up. Yes, I've opened up my Snapchat. You can find me, Brian Blassingay, on either one of those social medias. I will be glad to pray with you, pray for you. Again, we thank you for listening. Kim and Kim, we thank you for your your kindness, your sweetness, your generosity, and all that you do, not just for myself, but for everybody else through Elation Radio, Elation Radio family. Be blessed. And remember... Do all that you can. Do it in decency and do it in order. But most of all, do it for his glory. We out. Good night. Be blessed. Amen.